Hello, welcome to Gemini Network Open Live. I'm Seth Truger, Digital Media Editor at Gemini Network Open. Of course, if you're following along live, send us your questions or comments at Gemini Network Open on Twitter or in the comment box on Facebook or YouTube Live. Today, we are talking about the Association of Mobile Phone Location Data Indications of Travel and Stay-at-Home Mandates with COVID-19 Infection Rates in the U.S. And we've got Dr. Songao and Dr. Ajay Sethi with us. Welcome. Thank, so, thank you. Uh, thank you, Oh, sure. So first, uh, uh, Song and Ajay, if you could just uh, introduce yourselves, tell us a bit about who you are, what kind of work you do, and what uh, what you inspire inspired you to do the study here. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Seth, for having me. And uh, my name is Song Gao. I'm a assistant professor uh, in geography at the University of Wisconsin Madison. I'm also direct the geospatial data science lab. Um, basically, we look at the different geospatial data sets in this particular study uh, in early March. And we are, you know, uh, we're at the pandemic uh, at that time because of the stay at home order. And we are wondering um, how actually um, people's behavior change under such crisis and whether using the mobile phone data, uh, we can see uh, such changes and what are the consequences. Um, of those behavior changes. Yeah. Okay, Ajay? Yeah, so I'm uh, uh, Ajay Sethi. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Population Health Sciences at the School of Medicine and Public Health at UW-Madison. Uh, I also direct our Master of Public Health program. Uh, when Dr. Gao uh, was assembling a team of researchers to take a look at, you know, how were stay-at-home orders across the country working. He, he assembled a team with a lot of different perspectives. So I'm an infectious disease epidemiologist. Before COVID, I'd study HIV and healthcare associated infections. And now COVID seems to be kind of dominate what I'm studying now. Yeah, it certainly makes sense. I think that's uh, relevant for a lot of us, unfortunately. Um, and unfortunately, it seems like it will be for a while. Um, so this is really interesting. So you were able to use anonymous mobile phone data, uh, the geotracking, you know, the the GPS data that that all cell phones have now, um, to figure out what you know where people are going, basically what the travel distances are and the home dwell time, and associate that with state doubling times um, with the pandemic. Um, Going to welcome. We have a couple of viewers. Uh, Yolanda, Sandra, Stephen Gomez, and Dina USA have joined us. Um, so t tell us what you did and what your main findings were. So I will go first. Um, so in this cross-sectional study, and actually based on uh, millions of cell phone data, uh, we are able to identify the uh, travel distance of the trips, and then also how long the people stay at home. Uh, one interesting finding, first of all, definitely after uh, the stay-at-home order mandates, and we observe you know, the downward, downwarding and trend about the reduced mobility, but only at the beginning of this um, period. And then um, we actually observe some, you know, um, bounce uh, about the mobility pattern. And so uh, after that, uh, we try to associate the observed mobility changes and at each state, and then to look at how their uh, COVID-19 transmission uh, has changed. So we can observe, first of all, there is a temporal lag, you know, which means that uh, what's happening about the behavior changes right now will have uh, an impact later on. And that is um, about the, um, you know, the transmission. So I will let uh, RJ uh, talk more, more for specific about maybe the doubling time more in the epidemi epidemiology side. Uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, Dr. Gao sort of described so sort of the approach we used to, uh, to look at the mobility data. Uh, it was very important to sort of correlate that. Or would, would that change in mobility actually translate to decreasing the spread of COVID? And doubling time is, uh, you know, a metric to measure spread that is actually very easy to communicate uh, to the public. It's something that's easier to understand than perhaps like an R naught or something. Uh, so we calculated uh, doubling time empirically and then also did some curve fitting uh, techniques uh, to validate what we were observing uh, to essentially show that before versus after stay-at-home mandates, 
uh, there was a difference in doubling time such that COVID was, you know, slowing. Uh, the spread of it was slowing. Uh, and, and to see that correlation with changes in mobility uh, and staying at home was, uh, was very nice. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, you show it beautifully in figure 4A. Uh, if we can show that, I think this is a curve that we're all used to seeing for the last six months now. And you basically replicated the flattening curve that, that was the goal that we were, we were all trying to do. Um, you know, the, the brown tan curve of uh, the doubling time before stay-at-home orders and the blue flatter curve after doubling time orders. Uh, so is, was that the goal? Is this, is this showing the same thing? Yeah, you you mean the the um, left figure and the right figure? Yep, yep, yep. The left figure. Yeah, and again, this looks like the uh, familiar flattening the curve that we're all shooting for. Uh, yes, yes. So yeah, that's a another way of looking at the the curve because uh, on one hand, we know that uh, different states have a different you know uh, the epidemic growth curve, and this is why. Instead of just using uh, one curve, or you know, we actually you can add uh, the the overall pattern. So using the um, this probability density function, and then although uh, there is some you know uh, differences, but we can see uh, the peak or you know the um, the mean you know, the mean value uh, was the median value we look at, and then they actually have a uh, a shift. So the uh, from the left to the right, which means that it's actually after the stay-at-home order, and we actually observe, um, you know, larger doubling time, which means that the slow uh, transmission. And on the right hand, we actually look at specific uh, states, and to see, you know, before and after the the order, how the, uh, you know, the doubling time. Um, changed. So if it is, you know, falling to the upper corner, then we observe the super growth and or super exponential growth. Along the diagonal will be the exponential growth, while falling to the bottom side will be the sub exponential growth. So this is why we can see the clear trajectory about uh, the changes. Yeah, we just use different way to communicate uh, the changes. Right, right. you're gonna yeah. welcome Juliet. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, no, I would agree with Dr. Gao said, and and to your point, Seth, that you know there were a lot of conceptual diagrams of flattening the curve that were you know on full display 24 seven in, in the news. And, and it was nice to be able to look at the data and to sort of reconstruct that using actual uh, changes in, uh, in in doubling time, and and I would say that these data show show a flattening of the curve. Obviously, we would have wanted it to be flatter. The country would have wanted it to be flatter, maybe as flat as some of the conceptual diagrams that were being displayed uh, by various experts. But it was nice to to be able to demonstrate that. I think it's it's good for the public to see uh, in you know in what's happening with the data and how it matches what the goals were at the start of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So going to welcome uh, Julia chan Sanki has joined us. Welcome. We're talking about using uh, mobile phone data to track uh, stay-at-home orders and uh, movement and COVID infection rates. Um, and going back to, you already talked about it a little bit, but figure one, I think you really just show, you know, these the temporal changes and the associations of the, the travel distance and the home to all time. And then you can see there's a pretty, pretty stark drop in people's travel times and a pretty, pretty, I'd say overall linear increase in, in stay at home to all times. You know, does it, you know, obviously this this can't tell us causality. It's observational for a lot of reasons. Um, but it, does this, you know, does this imply that the stay at home orders worked as far as getting people to stay at home and getting people to, to travel less? Yes. So, uh, first of all, um, overall, even cross states, uh, we can see, you know, the gen general, uh, decline pattern in terms of their, uh, travel distance. And also the increasing pattern of their stay at the home uh, throughout time. Um, also, one interesting thing is that, as you can see from the figure, uh, if it is like you know more serious uh, or more most infected areas such as uh, New York at that time, and also 
uh, early is Massachusetts and New Jersey. Um, so naturally, you can see a uh, more steeper uh, job at the beginning, which means that actually um, we, we think that uh, one way to explain this is people indeed perceive the risk and then they you know respond uh, with their behavior change. However, we do observe uh, the geographic variation and you know even the uh, partition difference uh, in different states. So this is why uh, we actually see the you know general pattern, but we also observe the geographic uh, variation. Yeah, that's what we observed. Yeah, and, and I'll I'll just add that uh, you know when an issue like stay at home is is ordered um, for a state, uh, it it does take a little while before mobility. It shows the mobility data that people are indeed staying at home and, and reducing their time outdoors. Um, and there have been other research to show that that can also vary by socioeconomic status, for example, essential workers not being able to stay at home and ultimately staying at home is a bit of a luxury uh, for people who can do that. Yep, absolutely. I'm uh, going to welcome uh, Musij Gordon and Jorge Ravello, who's joined us. We're talking about using mobile data to track uh, stay at home orders, travel distance and uh, and COVID-19 infection rates. Um, yeah, again, I think that's a really interesting point that, you know, it's not just essential workers, but also different vulnerable populations, uh, hourly workers, people who aren't salaried, people who can't telecommute, uh, you know, if you're working at uh, a restaurant in a hospital versus, you know, being able to, you know, do computer work from home, it's very, very different for a lot of people. So there's, there's big uh, differences across populations. Um, so... I'm also a little curious here about this data set. Where do these 45 million uh, mobile phone uh, tracking data come from? Yes. So actually, uh, during this pandemic, we we saw so many, uh, you know, mobility data vendors. So actually, this is great for research, and many uh, companies actually are you know opening those data for research, and for uh, more specifically in this data. And we use two vendors. So one is uh, called the uh, Safe Graph. Um, this company actually also, um, you know, offer uh, the data to CDC and to many other organizations. And another company is called the uh, Discarders Lab, and they also, uh, you know, uh, cross all different uh, mobile apps and to provide those uh, mobility uh, to us. Um, however, I do want to mention that. Um, the data we have access actually are anonymized and aggregated, so it's more like index level. So we do not know uh, where exactly uh, people move around. So that's because of the privacy issue, obviously. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Gao secured those data, and and he introduced me to the world of mobility data. So a big shout out to him for doing that. <laughs> Yeah, it's really fascinating. Um, well, great. This has been really, really interesting for me. Um, I think, you know, the, uh, you know, as the pandemic goes on, trying to, you know, it's, it's hard. I think working in public health, we understand uh, what we were told from the beginning that if we take big steps, if things work, it's going to look like we didn't need to. So having an, any sort of evidence that that shows that these, uh, you know, historic efforts uh, and sacrifices that people made were worthwhile is really helpful. So this is really, uh, really good to see. Also, again, really nice to see, uh, uh, I guess, results of flattening the curve from our efforts uh, in the way uh, we're used to seeing it. Um, so that's very nice. And thank you for the work and thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. Great. Uh, so, of course, you can get this paper and more where it's free and open access at GemmaNetworkOpen.com. We have new papers coming out every weekday at 10 a.m. Central Time. And, of course, join us next week on Tuesday, 3 p.m. Central Time again for the next episode of JNO Live. So take care and stay safe.